Hi everybody, today we have Gerardo Scaglioni to come in to have a chat with us. Gerardo, how are you doing? Very fine, very fine, thank Great. you. Great, so let's begin with how you started learning a double bass. Could you tell us a little bit about how you started learning music or how you got to double bass? Yes, uh, I, was, um, I was born in Buenos Aires uh, in 1979. Um, well, my mother bought me a guitar when I, when I was born. She wanted me uh, to play the guitar. But I began uh, at 10 uh, with studying music uh, with the keyboard. Mm -hmm. I began stand, uh, learning keyboard. And then uh, after that, I, I took the guitar, um, joined a group, a rock group. Then I, I used to play the electric bass there. Uh, we had a band, a teenager band. Mm -hmm. We play. Uh, we are. We were fanatic of uh, Beatles music and, and some national music uh, the, of Argentina. Um, and then I, I began to listen to tango. I began to listen to jazz and and also classical music. Uh, and I fell in love with those with uh, all this music. But uh, but I see. Uh, I saw that there was a, a common uh, instrument in all of, all of this music, that was the double bass. Mm -hmm. So I realized that if I wanted to be a professional musician and to, to be a, to be a part of this kind of... Yeah, uh, to be able to play orchestra. jazz, tango and yes. classical. I had to learn the double bass. Yeah. That's, um, that's why I began to study in the conservatory of Buenos Aires, mm -hmm. and I began the, um, with my teacher was uh, Ricardo Planas. Mm -hmm. He was the uh, the soloist of uh, the um, Teatro Colón Orchestra, the prime, the, the first double bass there. He was a um, principal there. Mm -hmm. um, also, I wanted to learn uh, how to play tango. Um, I, I took uh, lessons of tango many years with um, Horacio Cavarcus, who was uh, also a member of the Colon Theatre Orchestra, but he was one of the greatest uh, double bass players uh, in tango, in the history of, of tango. Mm -hmm. He plays with all the major orchestras and mm -hmm. the great orchestras there, uh, with Leopoldo Federico Orchestra, with Horacio Salgano Orchestra, and many, many, many of the great musicians uh, uh, in Argentina in tango. So, parallel, I, I, I study tango with Cavarcus and, and I study in conservatoire with um, Ricardo Planas. Mm -hmm. And what about jazz? <laughs> jazz, I just played a little bit, but yeah. uh, it was too much for me. Yeah, <laughs> so, fair enough. Too difficult. <laughs> So, so I chose my my language was the, the tango and also the the technical preparation mm -hmm. the classical. So would you say you need the classical preparation to be able to feel comfortable playing yes, tango? Yes, of course. They they absolutely have, have to go together because you need uh, for playing any kind of music uh, you you need to be. Uh, uh, to dominate the instrument, to mm. understand the, the technique and the music, you need to know music if you if you want to be a professional in, in any mm -hmm. kind of style of music. So that's why it's very useful to to know the technique of, of the instrument to play tango. Mm -hmm. yes. And when would you say your first professional job was? Yes, uh, well, I I was. Uh, it was really, really fast. I, I, I joined the Academic Orchestra of Teatro Colón first. Um, and after that, a uh, couple of years ago, uh, I joined the National Symphony Orchestra mm. of uh, Argentina there in, in Buenos Aires. Oh, cool. yeah, I was really happy because it was uh, one of the reasons that, that I chose double bass. Um, because one of my dreams uh, was just to play classical, classical music in orchestra, mm. classical orchestras. Was mm. th this was uh, my dream? I went to many, many concerts. I, uh, first, uh, before playing the double bass, I went to many concerts of uh, classical orchestra, the national orchestra, and my dream. I was looking at the orchestra and listening they, them playing, and 
uh, I realized that this was my my dream to play mm -hmm. to play there. Um, yeah. Also playing tango, of course. Yeah. But when I when I joined the orchestra, it was like a, a dream come true. Mm -hmm. And now you've yeah. gone very far with that. You were what principal of um, Teatro Massimo yeah, in Palermo yes. for a bit as well. Yes. Wow, brilliant. Very nice. So what about teaching? Do you get much time for it? Or? Yes, I made some teaching um, uh, in Buenos Aires. Uh, there was uh, the orchestra, school orchestra. It's um, a system of orchestras um, that is... Uh, destined to um, teach music uh, in the um, marginal, um, uh, how do you say, mar mar marginal population, the marginal. Mm. Uh, it's like this El Sistema in, in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And this is a, an excellent idea, and, and I think uh, it's, it's a, a real solution for many, many problems we have in the society, in the modern mm -hmm. society. Uh, to take music to to the people, mm -hmm. music to everybody uh, for free, and I think it's a human right. Mm -hmm. Just to learn music should be a human right because all the the human race could be much more better if everybody has access to to the music mm -hmm. for all the reasons we we know. Just as like psychological and emotional, mm -hmm. it's. Um, really important uh, neurological um, system. Uh, it's really useful for, for everything. The, the, the kids uh, in, in the orchestra, when, when they began to, to learn an instrument, automatic, automatically they, uh, they began to be better students at school mm. because it was fully of benefits, uh, the, the, the studies in music should be together. So there I was teaching in, in the orchestra, uh, school orchestra of uh, San Isidro in mm -hmm. Buenos Aires. Was that the where, one for about 10 yes, years? My, my town time. Where, where, where I was born. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's brilliant. Yes, I passed uh, 10 years there. Mm -hmm. And what about now? Do you get to do much teaching? Uh, for the moment, no. For the moment, um, we are just uh, playing uh, some in orchestras and playing some mm -hmm. jigs and, and tango everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, making some recitals. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. And you've got uh, an album with lots and lots of solo music as well, yes. all kinds of genres, which I find really fascinating. Do you find much time for solo music nowadays? Or how do you find that balance? Yes, uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to find time uh, for everything. Mm -hmm. No, but especially now that you've got two yeah, kids. <laughs> especially now I have two kids, but they are really an inspiration, and, mm. and they give me the 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 force and the force and the strength to go to go forward. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm really happy. Good. Um, and is there any advice that you'd give to say like young professional no young students that are training to become professionals? Like, what was, like, kind of one bit of advice that you thought you really benefited from? <laughs> okay, yes, uh, to students that want to be professional, uh, I would say to go on, to, to go on uh, towards uh, their dreams, mm -hmm. uh, any, anything uh, they want to do, they are able to do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, the important thing is uh, to be constant um, and uh, study mm -hmm. and practice. Yeah, and practice. all kinds of music. All kinds of music. Yeah. Uh, to practice and to study and to um, read the uh, music, not only the, the instrument, also to take uh, lessons of uh, um, harmony and to yeah. of music. Everything is really, uh, really important mm -hmm. because uh, they will need it. Uh, when, when they are professional, mm -hmm. uh, technique and also music. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about your instruments, not necessarily that one because it's not yours, but <laughs> could you tell us a little bit about the instruments that you play on? Yeah. Do you play on different instruments for solo compared to orchestral? Or? I play, uh, um, for solo, I played uh, Thomas Martin, a Thomas okay. Martin instrument. I have a really nice um, 
solo model from uh, 2011 that uh, it's really it's a great instrument it's really comfortable it sounds great mm -hmm. really good and I used to have uh, some other instruments for orchestra um, some of them are uh, were antique uh, but without um, luthier but mm -hmm. some Roman instruments also but the most important and the, the instrument who's always with me uh, we are and separate is the, the, the Martin, the mm -hmm. Martin bass. That's brilliant. And what about your bows? Do you play with different bows? Yeah, Do you yes. have like maybe I a used, tango one? Or <laughs> yes, that's a nice question. Like I used to, to play um, German bow also. Oh, right. uh, and that from five years, I, I returned to, to the, um, the French bow, Italian bow, bow but I found it uh, really similar and if you understand the mechanic of the bow you can play uh, one of, on, of the, or all the other. Uh, in that moment when I, when I when I used the German bow I get some injury in uh, here mm. how, how, how do you say shoulder it? in the shoulder yeah. and I found much more comfortable uh, the German bow that's why uh, I learned uh, to use this. But I, I feel more, sometimes I, f I felt uh, more comfortable for, for solo music. But uh, in the time for me now, it's uh, indifferent to play one or the other. For tango, especially for tango, I, I consider that for me, it's uh, so much better the, the French ball. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I couldn't, uh, couldn't get the the swing and and the the, the sound mm -hmm. uh, I get with the Italian and French bow for tango with the, the German bow. It's mm -hmm. it's not uh, it's not a thing that I said it's 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 not possible. Um, I'm not saying that it's not possible to play yeah. with tango with German bow. I I couldn't do it, mm -hmm. but. I think uh, if you study and you practice, uh, could it be possible? Mm -hmm. For me, I, I, I found it really, really much more natural, so much natural for, because of the, the movement going uh, off the string and going bouncing, going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I found it really much different mm -hmm. and useful, much useful, the, the Italian bow than, than the the German. I noticed when you and Guillermo were doing that lesson together that, um, you know, it's very physical and there was that one technique you were saying where you used the wood of the bow to hit the screw. <laughs> Do you have like a bow that you sacrificed to, for that kind of thing? <laughs> you, you, you're uh, saying a thing that, that I remember now. Yes, I, I remember uh, I, I broke one bow when we oh. were, yes, yes, that's why I, I advise always, because um, I broke one bow in, in New York when we were touring uh, all around the United States. Um, it was a, a really cold day, it was in winter, I think uh, that, that didn't help. No. Um, I was playing. Uh, in the tango show, in tango company, we were touring all around. Um, I make an estrapata and with with the, the wood, yeah. And the bows, the bow get broken. Oh. they just in the tip. Oh no! Uh, it wasn't a, a super expensive bow, but it was my my, my bow for tango. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had to keep on going with pit, everything pizzic. Oh, right. <laughs> because at the moment uh, I took only one bow. And next day I had to go uh, <laughs> go um, to buy another bow mm -hmm. uh, immediately. <laughs> Do you now have like we a... Had a big touring or going forward. Yeah. yeah. Do you have like a, a different bow, an inexpensive one for when you do all the physical, like, tango things where you could potentially break your bow again? Uh, I'm always quite a bit uh, uh, um, afraid of that. 
but no that just I more think, careful now <laughs> just uh, i'm careful and, and i use only the um, the hair of the string mm. to make it bounce. you just don't use a wood anymore <laughs> it, it never happened anymore okay. <laughs> i i learned but it's true that if you if you do it with the with the wood of the bowl the the, the result is different it's mm-hmm. better i like it more but i didn't risk, risk anymore mm-hmm. So how how do you exactly balance your time between all these solo tango small small group tango sort of chamber music almost yeah. and orchestral? Do you find there's time to do enough of everything that you want? Yes, it's it's a matter of uh, organization. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of uh, just to be conscious of uh, the the things you have in in the next month. And in the month, and you mm-hmm. have to organize the the hours when also when you have kids, times are, are a little yeah. bit uh, less. But if you organize, you can do it, uh, concentrating and, and making a, a, a long term planning. Mm-hmm. If you make a, a long term planning and you and you make it, uh, you have to be earlier awake, mm-hmm. and you have to be um, more. Um, Disciplinated, yeah, but it's really uh, it's, it's a life skill, yes. really. Yeah, it's really nice to to live in a plane mm-hmm. of that place. We are really fortunate people. Mm-hmm. We can do it. And for the last question of the interview, if you could speak to your eighteen-year-old self, what would you say to him? Uh, well, uh, it's a nice uh, question. Yes, um, I I could say. To go, to go forward and to keep on going uh, um, towards his dreams because everything is going to be all right. Mm-hmm. That's so, lovely. Nice. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.